Well, good evening, all. I wrap in with your financial market wrap up, and this wrap up is for the evening of Monday, and this is D Day, June 6, 2024, the time 6 20 p.m. Central Time. Salute to all the allies that went in and kept uh, a free world. Very, very important. And Salute to them all. Most of us are families that went there. They're not with us. The average age of a soldier, I was seeing it on TV, 100 years old. I am older, so I remember the war ending in the sense that uh, about eight to 10 years later, maybe I was eight to 10 years old, just to give you an idea, you would see old soldiers, to me, you know, older men at, at eight years old, everybody's older, but so many damaged people. And I'm not talking mental, I'm talking physically. I remember that as a kid. And I used to say, what, what's going on? Why is that? Why is that? And it was war, terrible war. Uh, a lot of my father's friends uh, came back and one of them machine gun down the body, kept his arm and all, but uh, you know, you saw it and he was very proud and I agree. All right, so let's talk about where we're at because there's a lot to be had tomorrow. First off, the European Central Bank today went with the 25 basis point cut. So we're getting the break away from the United States. Now the Bank of Canada, European Central Bank and Denmark joined in and cut rates today too. All right, so we've got three that have cut rates this week. Now, the US is not ready to do that from everything I see, but it could be. Tomorrow, what happens is we're going to get, and let me get to where I want you to be on this. It's gonna be right here. We're gonna get the non-farm payrolls data at uh, 7.30 in the morning. Now, let me give you the numbers that I'm garnishing as, as I go through everything. The different TV networks are anywhere from 175,000 to 190,000 new jobs. When I look at Morgan and City, they are still saying, what? That there's, they have July still marked down with one of the banks saying there could be four cuts still this week. That would be, I believe it's City. And I'm going, wow. So what are their numbers they're looking for? Between the two of them, they are looking for 140 to 150,000 jobs. And the whisper number that was on Bloomberg today, which is a number away from the popular consensus, but what you're hearing is about 158,000. So obviously anything over 200,000 shakes the market up. The economy's much stronger in jobs. Anything down at the 140, 150, which is really an outlier number, will get those banks holding up their arms going, we won. You people all have it wrong. There's cuts coming quicker than you think. This thing's tipping over. And anything at 175 to 190 probably keeps us just where we're at. I hope that makes sense to you. April wholesale inventories and sales uh, data. And by the way, when I say keeps it where it's at, at least to the next report. Got it. Uh, April wholesales and sales data updated Friday morning. And the consumer credit numbers will come out tomorrow afternoon. So you want to keep your eye on all that. All righty. So let's go, if we could now, and here we are, to the chart action. Now, a piece of news happened uh, late today, and I'm saying after two o'clock, after the currency's closed. And in Mexico, the lower house is going to have a vote, and they're going to put through AMLO's measures. They said they got two thirds of the seats won. They have almost a majority in the Senate. Uh, they've decided before Ms. Scheinbaum comes in that they're going to vote on that and try to strip some powers away, give it to the government. A, a different things going on. The market got shook up, the business community especially, and you dropped over 100 points in the Mexican peso on that news. That came out of left field. Normally, so you get new, the parties that win and you let the president get in and you get new things done. They have decided, the, the Morena party, which is the party of Ms. Scheinbaum, uh, no, we're going to not wait for her. We're going to make our move now. Wow. That that's definitely shook the market up. And that's why if you go to the peso tonight, you see it down so much. When you take a look at the S&P, you're up 1.3% on a closing basis at this point in time knocking on the door of the highs. Knocking on the door of the highs right now in the S&P as well. You can see that, wow. And 
The trend is up. Higher lows, higher highs. Support on a big break, I would look for at 53.17 and a half. You'd have to get under the current chart pattern back under 52.62 to negate the bull trend. The resistance is right where you're at. You're on it. This is the Bollinger Band top, and it went there, and it just went like air out of the balloon for the moment. And it sort of died in no volatility today. I watched trade. I watched the trading volume in, in our company shrink like this, all right, as traders are all getting ready for tomorrow morning. You see this all the time, and that's where you're at. Overbought into the upper Bollinger Band, staying over that number, never an easy task. When we get to the NASDAQ, need I say anything more? The same identical thing. But that's where the strength of the market ends. When you step over to the Dow, all you've done is rallied back to the resistance of the 100-day average, and above it's the 18. This is what I'll call a bear market rally, wide bearish, because you're under the 18-day average, not over it like you are in the NASDAQ and the S&P. And you have the same identical thing going on in the Russell, under that average, staying under, and you're getting something of a rally off of that. In the 10-year note, you're up to the key resistance, the 100-day average in the Bollinger Band and overbought. So we've stretched out certain markets. Now the question is, can they run further because of jobs report, or even if you have a friendly number, have they exhausted themselves? Got to be careful right here. One of these most difficult positions to get into is when a market makes a vertical move up or down, where do you put a stop? I mean, everything's about where do you, where do you put a stop? Way back at that low? I don't think so. That's an awful big risk. You have the same identical thing happening right here, right now in the five-year note. So, I'm very happy to be sitting at this point. Now, which way will the dollar go? You get an inkling if you take out the highs of Wednesday. If that's taken out, you're probably going back to the 18-day average. I was hoping today to get a definitive answer. I expected the European Central Bank to make the rate cut. I thought that we'd get a lot of strength then or weakness on one of these. Well, I don't consider 16 points down in the dollar super weak, but it certainly gives control of the market back to the bears. It is an oversold condition. So I looked at the euro and the euro was up slightly. Let's get to it so you can see what I'm talking about here. There we are, up 17 points. You see that overbought, knocking on the door, but nothing's broken out to the upside or downside. That's what I'm looking for. So the fact that we didn't get that today off this probably means the market wants to see what the jobs report is and react to that in one of the three manners that I just went through with you. So we will see where you're at there. In the British pound, I continue to believe that the market is still a buy on breaks until the market loses with the red line under 79. So I'm still looking on pullbacks for that market to be all right. Bitcoin is still acting bullish in the sense that it's over the 18 day average. I think support will be close to the 70,000 level. I've said that all week, but I don't see a reason to come in. Ether, if you look at that, how sideways it's gone, it's amazing. Then we look at the differential between Brent and WTI, and it's gone from four and a quarter all the way back here to the 463 level. And today an event happened there. The Saudi energy minister came out and told the market they have it wrong. He, he of course, means if conditions basically warrant. The, the, the ministry and OPEC has the absolute right to change their mind if conditions warrant for the October release of 750,000 more barrels beginning at that point over a 12-month period. That could be pushed back. Again, I think I made it all week clear because they did this Sunday night. They screwed up. They had to say conditions warranting and say it in those manners, really strong, that our goal is that conditions warranting, not this is what the, we're going to go ahead and do. And that's how the market interpreted that this is what we're going to go ahead and do. Maybe he meant to say it different. It's not how the marketplace took it. But now that he's straightening this out, 
you're getting your rally. Look for key resistance up here. Let's call it from 81.45 to 82.39. This whole area is loaded with it. So I'd pay attention to that. Same thing in WTI, as one goes, the other goes, and you can see the lift on it, and gasoline's going with it. And the gasoline market is lifting out of here, saying maybe it too wants to finally get back there. So you'd have to go down in these markets now to the Bollinger Bands again to prove, ah, it's nothing more than a, a fluke here. It acts like the momentum wants to correct the bearishness at hand. We will see what happens. When we get to natural gas, I'm watching the heat domes in the United States. Out west, it's immense. Now they put a bid into the grains today, if you were watching that. And that has to do with that eventually moving. They think it might move into the Midwest by around the 15th of the month. Who knows? That's nine days from now. I can't, my weather people here can't get it right on the local news for tomorrow. So how do you plan nine days? But that's what's going on. I'm watching something right here. Is the 18 gonna cross over the 200? If that happens, it's another bullish element and that could put you in the 301 area here. The support's around 275 in the chart. We see the momentum trying to pick up. Now, if you don't get my news, my research. I'd like to at least give it to you a free way if you can, if you'd like to try it. And this is a good time to give that a try. Uh, we're going to be having a Father's Day sale very shortly. For some of you dads, it'll last a very short period of time. Special pricing on my monthly. Last sale for Memorial Day was a yearly subscription. This will be just for the monthly. So you can also get a free trial now and that'll tell you, hey, do I want to try what he's got there or not? So I'm putting it together. My morning videos, my twice daily updates, I cover all these markets, a lot of grain, a lot of meat. I cover all that in addition to what you see here. I cover daily and weekly charts. You're going to get access to my window envelope numbers that I'm always talking to you about. You'll see them plotted on charts and you'll get our QT mobile device, which works on all of your uh, be it uh, your iOS or your Android, access when you're a subscriber free to my next research report, which I'll probably put out after we see the jobs data. I want to get that out of the market and then put out another report. irapstein.com research, if you want to subscribe now, or irapstein.com, period, go to free offers and you can get your free offer there. Move your cursor up here, you'll go to the research area, but it's all there on the website. I'm Ira. Catch up with you in the morning when we see the jobs report. Get a good night's sleep. Probably going to be an active day. Take care.